Scientists talk about the difference between sparing and sharing. Well, it's certainly a much lower toned coffee than the, the modest coffee. Deeper, less brightness, but still vibrant. You sense the acidity, the liveliness in the uh, nose. This could be a natural processed coffee. In other words, processed in the whole fruit or perhaps a honey coffee as opposed to a washed coffee. If it is, it's a very clean, well executed. Like the chocolate notes, for example, are dominant. The floral notes are there, mm -hmm. right? Kind of a rose, deeper oh, yeah. than, uh, than the modest, the first modest coffee sample. Yeah, and my first guess was it was roasted darker, but I'm not sure that's it. That's a good point, Kevin. It probably is roasted darker, but I think the bean inherently uh, is, is probably a sweeter, lower toned. Uh, we talked about aromatic wood. Here you're getting a beautiful deep cedar note. Hmm, yeah, much more in wood. I suppose we could find nut in there, but except that it's, if it is, it's a very sweet nut. The fruit could be maybe more apricot than peach here, yeah. or maybe very, very ripe peach. Not mango, that's for sure. What did you say about mango? Not, not mango, definitely not, not mango, ma further no, away. No, not yeah. mango. Yeah. Of course, we bail out a lot of times in coffee tasting. We don't want to assign a, a fruit uh, in that family, so we say it's stone fruit. <laughs> yeah, stone fruit, right, right. That could right be, yeah, right. It's a lot of it's different kind of a possibilities. Out, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I would go for peach, but you know, it's like peach packed in uh, in fresh cedar or something. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. And now the, the chocolate is definitely like a dark chocolate. It's definitely there. It's behind me. This is a very, very nice coffee also. Very different style. I'm going to taste it, I think. Well, the complexity anyway. fades a little in the cup, at least at first. Well, we talked about body, Kevin. Mm. Yeah, there, here it is. <laughs> and here it is, right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, as a kind of a nice plush body, close to mm. syrupy. Mouthfeel, we should say, instead of body, it's more accurate. Mouthfeel, you think, is more accurate than body. Is that what you said? Yeah, because it involves texture, right? Yeah, so there's a viscosity element to it. When people talk about body, they yeah. often say yeah. full body or thin body. But really, it's the perceived weight of right. the liquid, but it's the nature of the viscosity that we register and that pleases us. Is it an illusion or is it real? You know, I mean, what we're tasting, because it seems real. It seems like there is actual well, texture. <laughs> Even though both both went through a paper filter, Jason, my uh, longtime uh, Cole Cupper, and I, we tested this. We tasted coffees and rated the the weight of the body or the mouthfeel, and then we took TDS, total dissolved solids, which is not a at all a perfect uh, measure. No, it's an of, uh, one too. It's one that's widely used in the uh, coffee industry mostly for brewing. You take the TDS to see whether you have a, a balanced cup. We were able to track the TDS uh, from tasting. In other words, we couldn't assign a number to the TDS, but of the samples we had, the ones that we thought were uh, fuller in their mouthfeel were higher in TDS. We did the same thing with acidity and pH. We took pH and tried to track the acidity, and we were pretty good there too. Both those measures are so blunt, without nuance, right? I don't think anybody's figured out how to measure viscosity in coffee. No. It is a thing. I mean, it is something that is that, that you can't right. help but right. analyzing them. It's interestingly comforting to me about the viscosity. If it's missing, if it's too low, I, do, I, I hold it against it. Well. I guess I liked it. <laughs> the finish doesn't have a lot of aromatic uh, carry into the finish, but no. it's very pleasant finish, very pleasing. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe the fruit has some cherry, 
suggestions I get. Uh, Bing, you know, the... the Bing cherry, yeah. What are the yeah. cherries? Yeah. Not the yeah, uh, does, little red ones, but the, the big dark ones. Right. right. The big one. Yes. Well, we just finished that mm -hmm. season here. See, if you called stone fruit, you'd get it all. You'd get the peach, apricot, and cherry. But I'm going more for cherry in the cup. Ah, I like and cherry. It's interesting the way that fruit note carries right into the finish and really stays yeah. with you. It's great. And the uh, chocolate uh, is less prominent in the cup, I think. In my opinion, a great cup of coffee for someone who wants everything we've been talking about so far, but doesn't want the sense of high acidity. And by that, I mean they right. think of the word acid in it. It seems like, when you mentioned sherry, right. it uh, reminded me of what I was sensing. This right. Coffee. No, so that's, that's a good point. It has... Uh, what we call acidity because it has vibrancy and it's alive, but it's not the kind of uh, tart, somewhat astringent right, sensation right. that people don't like. Hmm. Well, let's take a look, Kevin. I see how much right. it is, how much is processing method and how much is roast. Okay, this is Aroma Ridge and this is a pea berry. <laughs> And that's what really interested me about it initially. Aroma Ridge is the roaster. Yes. It says full on medium. It's said to be a sun dried process. Well, that, that means it's probably a natural. It that's what I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fruit. Yeah. Yeah. But a very nice natural. Because mm -hmm. remember, when the coffee is dried in the fruit, there's much more opportunity for off taste to develop during the drying than if you dry the coffee without the fruit, soft fruit. So it has to be done very well, very meticulously. They take bricks, degree of bricks, uh, regularly, mm -hmm. make sure that it uh, stays about the right temperature as it's drying. It's a very challenging process, Very done very well in this case. Right, this is a lo another lovely, and another tribute to Costa Rica, even though it's not the Costa Rican classic style, it's a tribute to the Costa Rica coffee industry to do things carefully and meticulously. So this is a I think a dried in the fruit natural that was done meticulously. Lovely. Yeah, this is from La Isabel Estate, which seems like a fairly large estate. I found a number of uh, coffees that, that's why I wanted to not get all my coffees from one area. It's one of the oldest classic regions, 1600 meters altitude, 5% of the crop. Uh, top 5%, obviously. Sun-dried, shade-grown. Uh, well, I think everything in Costa Rica is pretty shade-grown. Isn't it kind of a... No. No? No? A lot of... No, no. Okay. no. It's just the opposite, Kevin. Costa Rican coffee is mostly sun-grown. And the Costa Rica industry, in a typical, well-organized way, has concentrated on making the fields that grow coffee more productive so that they don't have to cut down more trees in order to grow more coffee. Uh. Scientists talk about the difference between sparing and sharing. Sharing means like uh, shade-grown coffee. The coffee is sharing with the trees. Sparing means that you, you try to concentrate the growing and spare any new tree cutting. The Costa Ricans are well committed, I think, in, in general. They may be shade-grown coffees in Costa Rica, but I think the, the, the tendency is to, is to grow in sun. Costa Ricans, I think, now have 24% of the total land area is protected. Oh, I don't know what the, the percentage is in other countries, but I think that's very, very high. Anyhow, that's my little story about <laughs> Costa Rica. Their claim for their own coffee is malic bright acidity, fruity floral notes, and long aftertaste. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. Malic acid is an acid that tastes a little bit like apples and is probably one of the sweetest acids that, uh, that we've isolated and that we talk about. In talking to this roaster, uh, Maya, she uh, she told me that a lot of this stuff. She felt there was a 
The reason they were attracted, and if, you, uh, if someone looks at uh, Roma Ridge's site, they have a lot of peaberry coffees. She said their reason they're committed to that is because the, they do feel they take the roast differently, which I think a lot of roasters that would agree with that. So even though it's an otherwise traditional coffee, that alone added some interest. I was curious to try it, and certainly whatever the results, uh, whether they're influenced by it being a pea berry, Pea berries roast differently from flat beans. Mm -hmm, exactly. I guess it's possible to normally roast nothing but flat beans to screw up the pea berries. They must be pretty experienced at it because they have about four coffees there that are pea berries that are different varietals. Yeah, right. You want to find out about the roast level on these two coffees? Yes, I, I do. I think J uh, Jason's I would love done that. Let me explain to the audience that I hope we have for this piece. Uh, Agtron numbers, it's a scale, scale for measuring darkness of roast. It's a tricky process taking these numbers for the darkness of the roast. They tend to be a bit relative from one laboratory to another. Our machine may read diff a little differently from somebody else's machine, but definitely it's very reliable in terms of contrast between samples. So we'll find out whether number one and uh, number two is darker roasted. Jason? Sample number one has an external electron of 53, darker side of medium, uh -huh. but it's still flatly in the medium category. Right. Sample number two is at 46, a little darker. A little darker, but ju just at the, pr probably at, to a four second crack. Right, um, exactly. But, you know, de definitely starting to right. have some dark elements. Good, thank you. Neither one of these would make uh, Starbucks get nervous. At the same time, they're certainly well, not third wave, correct? Exactly. They're staying in the comfortable area of medium, and the number two, the natural, which uh, we thought was darker roasted, is indeed, it's, it's roasted. On our machine, the number that Jason came up with usually indicates a coffee that's stopped just at the edge of second crack. Second crack is what, symbol, is what indicates darker roast. So this is a dark medium. Definitely. Okay. The other coffee is a medium medium, <laughs> maybe slightly darker than, than midpoint. Medium. In both cases, they roasted very well, I think. These are very nice roasts at those levels. Definitely, some of the characteristic is not only the processing method with sample two, but it's the roast level. So you're right. Good, Kevin. It tastes great. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.